why this week is. It's the third annual Whiskey and Women Unite function. I can get behind that. Right now we're going to talk to some women whose job it is to help preserve endangered cocktails. I'm moving right over here to our lunch break bar. We have Julie Reiner. She's owner of the Lanai Kai Club here in New York. And we have Lynette Marrero. I'm going to let you tell everybody your title. It's head of LUPEC. What is LUPEC? Uh, LUPEC is Ladies United for the Preservation of Endangered Cocktails. Yes. And we have our New York City chapter and we've been partnering with uh, Compass Box for this event for three years now. So you're making some endangered cocktails here. What? Tell me, what is an endangered cocktail and tell me what you blend it up here. Well the idea of an endangered cocktail it's really kind of a tongue-in-cheek sort of a thing. Um, we're, we're talking about your grandma's drinks you know cocktails that that they drank old fashions know? Manhattans. Did you um, know my grandma? She I just didn't, died. I don't Boy, know. Sounds like you knew my grandma. <laughs> I bet she liked a good she, martini. She, she um, so you know palettes change and, and we just like to make sure that those old classic cocktails stick around. Um, so we've created a couple cocktails uh, for the event. Okay and so what is What's in this first one that you blend, you're blending up right here? Well, basically, this is a riff on a classic Mai Tai um, because Lani Kai is a modern tropical cocktail lounge. And what I have in here is uh, Orjat, which is an almond syrup, honey syrup, uh, fresh squeezed lemon and orange juice, and I'm going to add my Great King Street scotch whiskey. And while you're mixing that up, let me ask you this. What, are, do you find that women need to sort of be more adventurous with their cocktails? I mean, is that one of the reasons you have sort of ladies behind this? Do you find that women have sort of slipped into a habit of just ordering sort of boring drinks when they go out? Well, I would say when, uh, actually, Julie opened the Flatiron Lounge here in New York in 2003 or four. you know, that was really the start of women drinking cocktails. And it was the first cocktail bar that was really mostly predominantly women. Right. So you'd go in and get these beautiful cocktails that were crafted so perfectly with all these wonderful things like tea and flowers and you'd have all these wonderful senses yeah. that engaged women in a in a more unique way rather than just a single spirit cocktail. Let's shake this up. So, so we what we're right. doing right now is with these cocktails, we don't want to just be limited by traditional spirits that appeal to women. So right. with things like, you know, the scotches that we're able to use, you know, these artists blend that they have with the great King Street, John Glazer's uh, whiskey making really has really fine nuances that I think really appeal to women, um, like the orangerie that I'm going to be using in the cocktail. So is, is it tough to be a female mixologist? Is that a, is it a male dominant? World. The cocktail world tends to be a little bit more male dominated, yes, certainly, but um, I think that that is what makes us. Uh you know, stand out a little bit more. Um, and while she's, what's this of the last one? Because I don't want to lose, have run out of time. What's the second one you've made over here while I taste this one? Certainly, this is a classic uh, cocktail variation on the a traditional drink called the blood and sand, which is traditionally cherry hearing, uh, which is an, a liqueur, orange juice, sweet vermouth, and scotch whiskey. I wanted to change that up a little bit for spring, add right. some cherry preserves, the orangery whiskey, which has a hint of orange in note in there, right. little lemon juice, lily rouge, and then an amaro to bring that sweet vermouth sort of opportunity and flavor profile. If you were going to offer these, I and mean, these come, these are these are amazing cocktails. If you were going to tell women that it's like something unusual to order, if they were sort of timid when they went to a bar, what would you sort of suggest they branch out with? Well, I, you know, there are a couple cocktails. You guys cocktails. have really got this down pat, though. I'm like, <laughs> I like think I like slosh it all over the newsroom. That's that's there good. There are a couple cocktails that I think are sort of crossover drinks right. They're for people that, that only want to drink a cosmopolitan. I'm like, try a Southside Fizz, you know, which is a, a great gin cocktail, an right. old classic. It's got muddled cucumber and mint and fresh lime, and it's really refreshing. Okay, um, good, i got to taste this quickly before we run out of time. We've got about 15 yeah. seconds. Julie and Lynette, thank you so much for being with us. And here's to Lupec. Cheers, and good luck with your Cheers. event this week. Thank you. I'll see thank you guys you. back here on Lunch Break tomorrow. Hmm.